Do you ever just say, why not? And go for it. Hi, friends of cocktails. I'm back to answering questions nobody asked. First inspired by James Hoffman and his quest to make donut-infused milk for coffee. I once made a donut old-fashioned, answering the question, can you make an old-fashioned cocktail that coats your mouth with the unmistakable sweet and rich flavor of a donut? Yes, you can. It was predictably delicious, so I thought, if that worked, what else could I combine? Two words. Brownie, Manhattan, rum. Okay, three words. Today we'll make a twist on the rum Manhattan, which is already an amazing twist on the classic, by infusing the rum with a chocolate brownie. I'm pretty sure that's all I have to say to get you hooked. But I'll also give you an idea what you can do with the leftover syrup from our skin of cherries. You know, that syrup, you never really know what to do with, after you use up the last cherry for Manhattan. All of that on today's episode of Cocktail Time. Let's start with a basic rum and head. I'll be using La Gisera de Serra Familiar as the base. This Colombian rum is aged in ex-bourbon barrels, giving it plenty of bourbon character, making it perfect for a Manhattan twist. It doesn't have any sugars added, giving us greater control over the sweet component in the cocktail. This is quite rare for rums nowadays. 2 ounces or 60 ml. Follow that with 1 ounce or 30 ml of sweet vermouth. Antica formula would pair really nicely with its sweet vanilla profile. For bitters, I'm going with 3 dashes of the Cocktail Time House bitters, consisting of a mix of aromatic, chocolate and orange bitters. Stir with plenty of ice until well chilled and diluted. Then strain into a chilled cooked glass and garnish with a cocktail cherry. And make sure you keep the sweet cherry syrup for later. Cheers! This wonderful, rich and complex twist should really be tried by all Manhattan and rum lovers. But let's take it to the next level, shall we? Here are the ingredients you'll need for a chocolate brownie rum Manhattan. Home infused brownie rum will be the base, to which we'll add the same vermouth as before, Antica formula, and a mix of bitters, this time just Angostura and orange, since there's plenty of chocolate from the brownie. And as always, a little saline solution to enhance the flavors. For garnish, we'll take a zero-waste approach and make chocolate brownie crackers and maraschino cherry jam from the syrup. Unlike the donut old-fashioned, where we infused and milk washed the whole cocktail, this time we'll do that with just the rum. That's because I don't want to lose too much of the herbal character from the vermouth with milk washing. Before we put the cocktail together, I'll show you how I made these homemade ingredients. Starting with the brownie rum. As mentioned, I'll start off with the same rum, La Cicera Reserva Familiar into which I'll blend a chocolate brownie and for milk clarification we'll eat milk and something acidic. Here I'm using a 6% citric acid solution, but you can use lemon juice as well, but that will add some flavor. For the brownie you can use store bought or make it from a pre-made brownie mix, but our director Robbie went full on babish mode and made this from his recipe. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to do the same. Start by adding 8 ounces or 240 ml of rum into our blender. Again, since we'll get enough sweetness from the brownie, the so-called dry style of La Gisera Reserva Familiar is a great choice. But this can also depend on how sweet your brownies are. Speaking of which, you'll need 60 grams of the chocolate brownie into the blender. Everything else is a delicious snack. And to make the milk clarification possible, a quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml of the citric acid solution. Then blend this brownie and rum mixture in a blender for at least 30 seconds. Making brownie infused rum is also a great way to use up any brownies. In the unlikely case, a few pieces were left untouched. Once that's done, heat up 40 ml or a little under 1.5 ounce of milk in a saucepan until warm. Turn off the heat and put the rum brownie mixture into the milk. The acidity we added will make the milk curdle and slowly separate the solid particles from our mixture as well. Let it sit for one hour, then filter the mixture through a coffee filter. I'll be using my Chemex, but only after the first few drops, which might not be completely clear. Once the curds create an additional filter, refilter that first part and give it time for everything to filter through. Once our brownie rum has been filtered, it's time to bottle it. But make sure you don't throw away the solid particles because we'll use that to make our garnish. And with our base spirit bottle, we can move straight into doing that. Before we use that leftover part, we need to make meringue. So here I have some powdered egg white, water and sugar. Later, we'll also add some powdered dark chocolate. Start by mixing 30 grams of water with 3 grams of powdered egg white. You can also use one egg white instead of that. Gradually add 50 grams of sugar while mixing, until all the sugar is fully incorporated and melted. Continue to mix until you get meringue with stiff picks. Give it the ultimate over the head test just to be sure it's done. In a smaller bowl, combine around 1 tablespoon of the leftover filter brownie mix with some water to create a liquid mixture like this. Scoop this into the meringue and fold it in. I also added some dark chocolate powder, but this is optional, because there was some fat in the mixture, the meringue will fall of it. So I'll spread it into a large disc shape, pour the meringue onto baking paper and distribute it evenly. 
then place it in the preheated oven at 80 degrees Celsius or 175 degrees Fahrenheit for about one and a half hours. The time can vary depending on your oven. Open the oven doors a few times during baking to release the steam. Once the brownie cracker is dehydrated, take it out and let it cool completely. Then all you need to do is to tear it into pieces that are suitable for the rim of a glass and store them in an airtight container or try a piece with some cherry jam. Here's how you make that. So let's answer the question of how to use this leftover syrup as a delicious addition to your garnish. Get some pectin and make a jam with it. We'll need 100 grams of syrup altogether, with 3 quarters of it going straight to a saucepan and place on medium heat to come up to a simmer. The rest of it is used to mix in 2.2 grams of pectin. Pectin is a soluble fiber used to gel jams, jellies and gummy candy, where it can be used as a vegan alternative to gelatin. It's found in fruits and vegetables, especially apples and citrus peels. Once the cherry syrup starts simmering, add in the pectin mixture and stir for everything to mix evenly. Leave to simmer for about 1 minute before taking off the heat and leaving to cool completely. Once cooled enough, I'll transfer it to a piping bag to make it easier to apply on the cracker later. Place the bag in the fridge since the jam needs to be cooled to stiffen a bit before we can use it on our garnish. With that, we have all components needed to make the chocolate brownie in rum Manhattan. If you have any cool name ideas for this cocktail or another cocktail idea where this brownie rum would work great in, share them in the comments below. As always, I'll start by chilling the mixing glass, while we already have a cooked glass chilling in the freezer. As before, 2 ounces or 60 ml of our base spirit, this time the chocolate brownie infused rum. The ratio of rum to vermouth will be slightly different to let the brownie flavors really come through, so follow that with 3 quarters of an ounce or 22.5 ml of Carpano Antica formula. For bitters, I'm going with 2 dashes of Angostura Aromatic Bitters and 1 dash of homemade orange bitters. I'll leave a link to my old orange bitters recipe and, as it's traditional around here, 2 drops of 20% saline solution. This will nicely highlight the chocolate notes in the cocktail. Stir everything with plenty of ice and you'll quickly see how the oils from the chocolate brownie turn the cocktail cloudy, as the dilution of the ice drops the temperature. Same thing happened with the donut old fashioned, which is why I served it in an espresso cup. Since this is still in Manhattan, I think a cooked glass is more appropriate. Cloudy cocktail and all. As for the garnish, place a zero waste chocolate brownie cracker on the rim of the glass and add a few drops of our cocktail cherry jam. Beautiful, if I can say so myself. On the nose, you get a wonderful combination of chocolate and sweet vermouth. The smooth rum provides the perfect vehicle for the taste of a brownie to take over on the palate. It has a nice, chocolatey and herbal aftertaste. It's a real treat and you deserve one. So to ask the first question again, do you ever say, why not? And just go for it. I really hope you'll try making this fun Manhattan twist. And if you want to learn more about the history of the classic Manhattan, check that out here. I'll go finish this delicious cocktail and I'll see you next week. Cheers.